Kaya nga, ang ganda nung verse na nakalagay, all things work together for good to them that love God. All things work together for good, not for everybody, folks, to them that love God. Number one, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Number two, hindi lahat. Do you love God? How much do you love God? If you truly love God more than anything else, if you love God more than anything else in this world, then that verse can be applied to you. Ngayong gabi ay gusto kong ituloy ang uh, ating pinag-usapan kaninang umaga. Gusto kong tapusin upang tuloy-tuloy ang ating kaisipan tungkol dito. Muli, I want you to open your Bibles with me to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6. Ating babasahin muli ang verses 6 to 12. Ating re-reviewin ang ating pinag-usapan kanina at pagkatapos niyan ay tutuloy natin sa panghuling kabanata ng mensaheng ito. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment Let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some covered after, they have earned the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee this thing. And follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, for unto thou art also called. And us profess a good profession before many witnesses. Now, to begin with, I'd like you to know that all of these verses were written for the believers. They were not written for the unbelievers. We see we end. they were all written to us. At makikita nyo, personally and particularly, the Apostle Paul gave a warning to Timothy. In verse number 11, he said to Timothy, But thou, O man of God, flee these things. And what should you follow? Follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, For unto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. So, while I'm preaching to you tonight, and using all of these verses, take note, God is talking to all of us. And we better listen. Okay? You may be seated. The love of money. Well, let's make a review for a while. Someone said that money is a great servant, but what? A terrible master. And it's true. Apostle Paul taught the believers should aspire, aspire not to be wealthy in this world, but rather learn and endeavor to lead their lives in godliness and contentment. This is quite different from the aspiration of the unsaved, correct? Kasi ang gusto ng unsaved, umaman. Ang gusto na hindi mananampartaya, maging successful. Pero tayo hindi. Hindi yun ang focus natin. Alright? So as believers of Christ, their devotion and aspiration should always be aimed at the things of God and not the things of this world. The desire to get money and wealth is detrimental to our spiritual health and growth of every believer. So, Apostle Paul gave us this warning. First of all, we talk about why the love of money is the root of all evil. Why? Because, number one, it can affect and infect 
godly attitude and character. And what are those godly character and godly attitude and character like faith and godliness and giving and godly affection? Money or wealth can make you wander from your faith and godliness. It can make you greedy and covetous that will hinder you much in your giving to the Lord. Perhaps uh, ang mga focus dito lalo na ang mga alam mo mga millennials ngayon they're very ambitious. Eh. There's nothing wrong with ambition. Nothing wrong with that. But put your ambition in the will of God. You know, ibig sabihin, mas mahalaga sa atin ang will ng Panginoon kaysa yung mga ambition natin. Ako may ambition din ako eh. Di ba? Nung araw, gusto ko maging abogado. O, oh, yun ang focus nung buhay ko, maging abogado. Kasi, abogado, magaling kang abogado, yayaman ka, you know, bida ka at lahat na. Kaya nga commerce ang kinuha ko eh. Para after that, punta ako sa law. Pero, iba yung gusto ng Panginoon sa akin eh. Di ba? Di ba? So I went to full-time ministry because the Lord impressed upon me, burdened me, to go into full-time ministry. Aba salamat naman ako ng aking anak si Princess ay dinisayt niya to pursue her course on law. Sabi niya ang tatay ko gusto niya maging abogado hindi natupad yan so tutuparin niya hindi tinupad niya. See, you know, sabi nga ng Bible, all things work together for good, correct? Mm-hmm. Now, magkikita niyo rito Sa so 1 Timothy 6, 9, and 10, yung ating text. Pinagkit ko sa inyo, rich dito, but they that will be rich. And I told you that the word rich here is a word that is relative. No? Sabihin eh, condition na pinag-uusapan dito. Eh. So if you're earning 10,000 pesos and somebody is earning 20,000 pesos, then he is richer than you are. Di ba? The condition of your life. Kaya huwag na isipin. No? So, may yaman lang pala ito. Hindi ako may yaman eh. No. It's not so. Ang sabi ng Bible, sa mga yumayaman, sa mga nagkakaroon, oh, it is easy for us, tayo mga anak ng Diyos, ha, to fall into temptation and a snare, into many foolish and hurtful lusts, with drawn men in destruction and perdition. Marami magagawa ang pera. Marami. Marami magagawa ang pera sa gusto mo na mangyari. Correct? Hmm. Nakita ko yan sa buhay ko. Kung nakikita ko yung giving ko sa Panginoon, I could have used that for the world and for my own self. But do I become richer for that? No. You could be able to spend all the money you want. It does not mean you become richer. Diba? Oo. You see? Why? For the love of money is the root of all evil. It can destroy people. It can destroy people. When you make money your master, it can destroy individuals, it can destroy families, society, and nations. And thirdly, the love of money and any form of materialism Solomon called it what? Vanity. You better believe him. Diba? You the better believe Solomon. Because during his time when he was king, he was powerful, he was so wealthy. Hindi niya alam kung paano yung gagamitin ng pera niya. You see? Kaya binasa natin yung Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 1 and 11. Nag-testimony niya Solomon. Nag-testimony siya. How he enjoyed pleasure. Sabi niya, I have all the money I want. I tasted all the pleasures in the world. And sabi ni Solomon, Behold, this also is what? Vanity. I 
gave everything for myself. I used everything for myself. Huh? Makikita nyo rito how Solomon said in verse number 4, I made me great works, I built me houses, I planted me vineyards, I made me gardens and orchards, and I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruit, I made me pool of waters to water the with the wood, bring it forth trees. I got me servants and maidens and had servants born in my house. Also, I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. I gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasure of kings and of the provinces. I got me men singers and women singers and the lights of the sons of men as musical instruments and that of all sorts. So I was what? Great. I thought I was, didn't it? And increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. And also, my wisdom remained in me. Hindi tinanggal ng Panginoon yung wisdom na binigay sa kanya. Ando pa rin yung wisdom niya. And then he says, And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy. For my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Sa nakita ko yan, gusto ko yan, kunin mo. Whatever it is, whoever he is. Yan ang sabi ni Solomon. And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. And then verse 11, ito yung naging conclusion niya, eh, di ba? Then I look on all the works that my hands had wrought and all the labor that I had labored to do and behold, all was what? Vanity. And vexation of spirit. Ano ibig sabihin ng vexation? Ha? Akala natin ang kayamanan nagbibigay ng pleasure, di ba? Magbibigay ng happiness, di ba? Sa buhay ni Solomon, di pala ganun eh. Vexation eh. Dungkot, stress, di ba? Distress, frustration, alright? Ano lahat? Then he says, And there was no prophet under the sun. Walang pakinabang sa ilalim ng araw. Maniwala tayo rito. Kasi experience to na isa sa pinakamayamang tao sa buong mundo eh. Di ba? At kung inyong titinan din naman, ang mga sinasabi ng mga mayayaman sa mundong ito, same thing. Same thing. I mean, you know, so what if you're worth $5 billion? So what if you're worth $24 billion? So what if you're worth this and that? So what? Will you bring those money to the grave? No. Maging busy ka sa lahat ng bagay, magtrabaho ka, napupuyat ka at lahat, ginagawa mo lahat yan, magkakasakit ka, ubos ang pera mo, sakit mo. Am I right? I've seen people have a lot of money and they became poor because of what? Ill health. Mahal magkasakit ngayon. Di ba? Mahal mabuhay, mahal mamatay, mahal lahat. O, mahal magpakasal, mahal mga anak. Wala na mura ngayon eh. Si Buyas nga mahal eh. So, kanina... Nandun tayo sa punto where I ask, what believers should do to avoid falling to the temptation of money and wealth? Lahat tayo meron yan, di ba? Lahat tayo meron kanyang temptation of money and wealth. Kahit na magkano yung wealth mo, kahit magkano yung kayamanan mo, may temptation pa rin na magkaroon ka ng marami. Alright? So, 
Anong gagawin natin to avoid? First of all, ito magiging mindset natin lahat. Set your affection on things above. Mindset. Mindset. Ang sabi ni Apostle Paul, kung ikaw nga ay uh, binuhay na ang Panginoong Heso Kristo, kung ikaw nga ay ligtas, kung ikaw nga ay anak ng Diyos, then sabi ng Bible, seek those things which are above. The Apostle Paul could have continued to be a bureaucrat and be a good lawyer, isn't it? But they stopped doing it and he began to serve God. When he began to serve God faithfully, what happened to him? He was persecuted. But he continued on seeking those things which are above. Hindi madali ito eh. Bakit? May mata ka eh. Nakikita mo yung nangyayar sa'yo. Paligid mo, di ba? Nakikita mo yung kaibigan mo, mas successful kaya sa'yo. Nakikita mo yung mga kamag-anak mo, mas maganda ang buhay kaya sa'yo. May mata ka eh. Kaya ang sabi ng Bible, seek those things which are above. And then in verse number two, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Is it possible for believers to do that? Yes, it is. Possible nga sa akin eh. Hindi possible din sa'yo, di ba? Meron tayong Holy Spirit. Am I right? Do you have the Holy Spirit? Then it's possible. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, then it's not possible. But because you have the Holy Spirit, it's possible. Am I right? It's possible to me because I have the Holy Spirit in me and He is the one convicting me if I do wrong. He is the one telling me, hey, you focus your eyes on me. You focus your eyes on Jesus Christ, not in this world. Diba? Where, according to Gen the Beloved, where the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life are always there. Then secondly, consider. And what should we be, what should we consider? Let's open to Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to 33. And this is what we ought to consider. Okay? And in verse 25, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life. What you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on, it's not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Ano, hindi, ba, hindi naman ibig sabihin. Huwag isipin. Ang ibig sabihin lang, huwag mong i-focus. Di ba? Huwag mong i-focus ang attention mo ah, sa kailangan ng buhay mo. Kung anong kakainin mo, kung anong iinuin mo, o oh, damit mo, whatever it might be, don't focus on that. O. Oh. Bakit? Ano ang mas mahalaga? Ang buhay ba? O pagkain? Ang buhay ba? O ang... O damit? Nabigyan na example ng Panginoon sa atin. Sabi niya sa verse number 26, Behold the fowls of the air. Mga ibon. Sa ipapawid. They sow not. Neither do they reap nor gather into barn. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Mas mahalaga ba sila kaya sa'yo? When even the heavenly Father feed the fowls of the air? Verse 27. Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? Sige nga. I-focus mo yung attention mo. Sa so gusto mo, 
O gusto mo tumangkad? Ibibili ka ng ano? Sapatos para tumangkad. Pero pag nagal mo ang sapatos mo, ganun ka pa rin kalit. O siguro ang gagawin mo, papalaguin mo yung buhok mo, papatangkarin mo yung sarili mo. Pero pag natulog ka na, ganun ka pa rin kalit. I mean, wag nating i-focus ang atensyon natin sa mga bagay na hindi permanente. Na maaaring mabago. Yan sabi ng Bible, sabi ng Panginoon sa Kristo. Verse 28, And why take you thought of raim- for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, near they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was at arrayed like one of this. Si Solomon, fashionable yan. Hari. Magaling magdamit. Hmm. Pero, hindi ito yung focus ng buhay niya eh. Ganon din tayo. Ako, gusto ko magdamit ng maayos eh. Kung nakilala niyo ako nung araw pa, maayos ako magdamit. Magaling ako magdamit. Alright? Pero hindi ito nakafocus yung buhay ko. Hindi nakafocus ang buhay ko sa mga bagay-bagay na binibigay ng mundong ito para masira ang focus ko sa Panginoon. That is what you should realize. Hindi natin pinafocus ang buhay natin sa mga bagay ng mundong ito na mawawala ang focus natin sa ating Panginoon. Ha? O, oh, love life man yan. Pagka minsan, pag yung love life mo, nakafocus ko doon, wala ka ng ibang naiisip kundi yun eh. Fashion, food, jewelry, whatever it might be. In verse 30, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall He not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Hmm. Sabi niya, di ba? Kung yung mismong uh, tamo, Inaalagaan ng Panginoon yan. Pero yung damo, the next day after, susunugin mo na yan. How much more you? You that God created in His own image. You that God gave a personality. Am I right? You that God made beautiful in His time. Therefore, take no thought. Hindi ibig sabihin, wala isipin. Pero, ulitin ko, Wag mong bigyan ng priority sa buhay mo more than God. Therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or we withal, wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek for your heavenly Father know it that you have need of all these things. Alam na ba ng Panginoon nyo? Alam niya eh. Bago mo sabihin sa Kanya pa ang kailangan mo, alam niya na eh, di ba? So trust Him. Okay? O sinabi niya sa verse 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and what? All these things. Ano yung these things? Mga bagay material na gusto mo. Mga hinahatap mo sa buhay. All these things shall be added unto you. So ibig sabihin, Meron tinatawag na spiritual blessings, meron material blessings, at ang material blessings, added blessing lang yun eh. Ah, di ba? If, 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 if you will just obey God and live according to His will, ang mga bagay material, bibigay ng Panginoon siya. Added blessings lang yan eh. But they're not the all important thing that you ought to focus your life on. Oo. Ako, pag nangailangan ng ating eksesya, pag nangailangan tayo ng pera dito, ang dami ko pwedeng ibenta eh. Pwede kong ibenta yung mga kotse ko, pwede kong ibenta mga gamit ko. Walang kwenta naman yun, di ba? Ang laki-laki nga ng depreciation. For example, bumili ka ng magandang kotse. Ha? Yung Bentley ko, na binigay niyo sa akin, Oh, 
ang brand nyo niyan, 34 million. Pag ginawa ng pre-owned yan, after one year, pumabagsak ng 18 million yan. Pag ibebenta ko ngayon yan, three years old na yan eh. Di ba? Three years old na yan eh. From 34 million, hindi ko na kayang ibenta ng 15 million yan. Bagsak na ang presyo. Ganon katindi ang depreciation ng mga gamit, kahit mga ganda. Di ba? Ang hindi lang nagde-depreciate, ginto, lupa. They don't depreciate, di ba? Pero halos lahat ng gamit ng buhay, kahit ikaw, i-depreciate. Tumatanda ka eh. Am I right? Oh. Kung nung araw, nung bata ka pa, oh. maganda ka, mamahalin ka. After 30 years, hindi ka nang, hindi ka nang ganun kamahal. Oh. Dadagan mo pa. Di ba? Kayo mga lalaki, nung bata ka pa, ang ganda ng buhok mo. My goodness. Buhok mo, kulot pa yan. At talagang asalap mong suklayin. Ngayon ano, wala ka na masuklay. Hindi ko na nga sinabing you deteriorate eh. Ang sinabi ko, you depreciate. Huwag natin pag-usapan, you deteriorate. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Ako lang hindi na-depreciate. Pansin nyo. <laughs> you see? Pero look ha. Oh. Sa lahat ng bagay, kailangan natin alagaan yung mga ngipin natin, kailangan alagaan natin yung buhok natin. Am I right? Alam mo, sa, sa, sa mukha ng tao, dalawang bagay ang dapat mo alagaan para hindi ka magipangit. Buhok at ngipin. Tama? Buhok at ngipin. Can you imagine kung bungi ka? Kung walang ngipin tong ito at yan yan. Oh. Diba? Papangit ka eh, kahit na ganda mo lalaki. Oh. Kung hindi maganda yung buhok mo, alam mo bakit ako bumata ng konti? Punta ko rin sa isang ano eh, hairdresser, stylist. Baguhin mo yung style ng buhok ko. Tumihin siya. Binago niya. Ayun. Meron palang ano nun? Meron palang... Yung palang hairstyle eh, nakakatulong pala yun. Pero siyempre, kung wala ka ng buhok, ano pa may tutulong ng hairstyle mo? So consider all these things. Don't make things in this world more important than your faith in God. Huwag niyo hayaan na ang mga bagay sa mundong ito mas maging mahalaga sa iyo kaysa sa ating Panginoon. Okay? Then thirdly, be godly and content. Yan sabi, no? Be godly and content. First Timothy 6.8 And having food and raiment, let us be there with what? Content. Sabi ko kanina sa inyo, ang dalawang ito, Food and raiment are the most important commodity that you have in your life. Ibig sabihin, you cannot live without it. For the Lord gave you that, be content. Di ba? Be content. Do not try to spend more than what you ought to spend. O, pag ginawa mo yon, pasikat ka, di ba? Pasikat, mayabang, things like this. Always live within your means. Huwag kang mangungutang para makabili ka ng mga bagay na later on, masira na, hindi ka pa ng utang. When you learn to live by faith, 
hindi ka mangungutang. Do you realize that? Hindi ka mangungutang. Alam mo doon sa Middle East, marami na kukulong dahil sa utang. Dito wala na eh. Pero sa Middle East, marami na kukulong dahil sa utang. I just imagine kahit magandang sweldo mo, umuutang ka pa. Why? Because you want more. The thing is, when you begin to focus your attention to the things you have, you want more. Di ba? You won't be content. You want more. So do not focus on the things you have. Focus on God. When you focus on God, you're going to have contentment. You're going to have godliness. And you're going to tell yourself, Lord, you have been good to me. You have been giving me all of my need, even some of my wants. Always, always, the Lord. Diba? Pursue Christ and his gospel. First Timothy 6, 11 to 12, But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Follow all of those things. Righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith because in this world we will always be at war. We are at war against the flesh. We are at war against the world. We are at war against Satan. And the only way to win that war is what? Fight a good fight of faith. The Lord gave us the necessary weapons of spiritual warfare for us to win that war. Am I right? Oh, yes. We might lose some battles, but ultimately we're going to win the war, folks. Win the war with me. By God's grace and mercy, win the war with me. And we're going to win the war. And you might say, well, you know, sabihin natin, for example, like, you have troubles every day, you have problems every day. Ako, I have learned, I have learned to continue working under stress. Never stop. I have learned not even let my own frustration hinder me to do a work for God. I've learned that. I don't stop. I might rest. And if you need to rest, rest, but don't quit. Amen? If you need to rest, rest, but don't quit. I must rest. I should rest. But you don't stop. Why? Because you are doing a greater work than what the world would like to give. What kind of success do you think this world can give that you can focus your attention to? Huh? How much money you think the world can give to you wherein you could be able to just focus your attention to it? What kind of power do you want to have so that you can forget the power of God and live according to what you want? When God is on your side, you can't lose. You cannot lose when God is on your side. So always pursue, you know, pursue the principle of letting God to be on your side. Whatever happens, whatever the, the difficulty might be, Whatever the problems might be, we have passed all through that. Folks, listen, you listen to me now because I'm not, I am not just talking about the Word of God. I'm talking as an old man who will be 72 years old in July. If you're 30 years old, you're 40 years old, you have not experienced 50% of what I experienced. But I continue on. I go on. I never stop. Do you know why? Because I have a path to follow and because my attention is always, listen, Lord, you're going to come again and get me from this earth. That is what I look forward to. The coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you look forward to that? 
Oh, in, you cannot look forward to the coming of Christ. Kung nakafocus yung attention mo sa bagay ng mundo, di ba? You can do that. The reason why the unsaved cannot believe in the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know why? Because their focus is the world. Oh, enjoyment nila, mundo. Ay nilang mamatay sapagkat wala na yung enjoyment nila. Oh. Listen. Live right in this world, but do not look for heaven in this world. Walang langit sa mundong ito. We're gonna go there one day. Amen? Let's look forward to that. One day our faith will become sight. Our hope will be fulfilled. So let's continue to love God and continue to love what God loves. Hebrews 13, 5 says, let your conversation be without covetousness. Ano yung conversation? Yung buhay natin. Let your manner of life be without covetousness. Huwag kang magiging swapang sakim makasarili. Alright? Don't do that. And be content with such things as you have. For he had said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Listen. Just the... Just those words give us comfort at the time in which we are alone. Diba? Mabuti pa ang pangulo ng Pilipinas. May mga barkada yan eh. At kilala ko yung mga barkada niya. Kilala ko. Ako. Wala akong barkada eh. Nag-iisa ako sa posisyon ko. Nag-iisa ako doon sa itaas. Meron ba ako mga pastor na pwede mong gawin barkada? Wala. Bakit? Ako na ibigay ng advice eh. Ako na ibigay ng comfort. Tanong, sino ang bibigay ng comfort sa akin? Sino? Kaya dapat malapit na malapit ang salatan ng Panginoon sa atin. Eh. Ito na yung bigyan ng comfort sa atin lahat. Eh. Palagay nyo kaya, uh, even my wife of 45 years can give me comfort or my children, they cannot. There are things in the ministry that a lot of people don't even understand. And the only one who does is the pastor himself and God. You know, if I have 5,000 members, I have 5,000 problems. Do I have 5,000 solutions? No. But I praise the Lord that all of those problems, whatever it might be, are all covered by this book. I consider myself the most misunderstood preacher in this country. You know that? But you begin to wonder that the most misunderstood preacher is also the most needed. Perhaps God made that to be. Diba? Alam mo, lahat ang naranasan natin, lahat, lahat ang experience natin, lahat ang naranasan natin, either way ito eh. Ito ay talagang kalooban ng Diyos na mangyari, ha? direct will niya yan, talagang kalooban niya yan, o ipinahintulot niya. Iba yung kalooban niya, iba yung pinahintulot niya. May mga bagay-bagay na pinapahintulot ng Diyos sa atin na hindi niya kalooban. You know, you know what I'm saying? Kaya buhay ka pa eh. Diba? Kaya buhay ka pa eh. 
Sabagat hindi lahat ng ginagawa mo kal- kal- kalooban ng Diyos eh. Pero lahat ng ginagawa mo kapahintulutan ng Diyos. Eh kung sawa na siya, ayaw na niya, okay? It's time to go, my boy. Kaya nga, ang ganda nung verse na nakalagay, all things work together for good to them that love God. Eh. Kaya, ano, ano yan eh? That is quali- qualified yan ha? All things work together for good. Not for everybody, folks. To them that love God. Number one, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Number two, hindi lahat. Do you love God? How much do you love God? If you truly love God more than anything else. If you love God more than anything else in this world, then that verse can be applied to you. If you believe you are called according to His purpose, then that verse can be applied to you. And how do you consider it? Diba? You know, as we grow in our faith, and we should grow, as we grow in our faith and knowledge of Christ, we see and appreciate more the value of God and its role in our lives. How valuable is God to you? What do you believe is your role before God? We put premium now on the things of the Lord rather than the things of this world. We put premium on the things of God, diba? Now, I'm, I'm preaching to myself too because with all of the things God gave to me, you know, you realize what I'm saying? With all of the things God gave to me, with all of the benefits I have, There is always a temptation on not putting God premium in my life. Always that temptation. Oh. Ngayon, kapag ginawa nating priority at premium ang mga bagay tungkol sa Diyos rather than the things of this world, The world has totally lost its appeal to us. For example, nung araw, ang appeal ko, ang, ang, ang priority ko, pagkain. Wala akong pakialam kung lumaki katawan ko, eh, tumawa ako, eh. basta kakain ako. Ngayon, iba na yung focus ko. Eh. Ang focus ko, ha, pumayat. Di ba? Pag alam maging malusok ako, so anong gagawin ko? Hindi na pagkain ang focus mo. Ganon kasimple yun eh. Nakuha nyo? Ano pa ang nag appeal sa atin sa mundo? Maraming bagay. Lahat tayo mayroong weaknesses. Am I right? Meron pa rin appeal ang mundo sa atin. Pero you know what? Anything in this world can be controlled. Amen? And God has all the power in this world to control that. All our aspirations and desires now revolve around more and more on Jesus Christ. More on Christ. And that is our goal. That's my goal. Hindi ko pa nahaabot yun, but that's my goal. Di ba? Kaya nga sabi ni Apostle Paul, I pursue. Ang sabi niya, di ba? Ha? Not that I have apprehended, but I reach. Amen? Inaabot ko. Oh, kahit kayo mga kabataan, kinakailang isipin nyo na yan. 
I am not putting these principles in you. Why? Because when a person who is young do not have principles, he's going to fall on anything. Do you realize that? Huh? Take note of this now. Huh? You don't stand on something, you fall on anything. Do you understand? Do you have principles to follow? Huh? Tinanong ako ng law students doon sa San Beda, isang araw. Sabi nila, we'd like to question Congressman Abante on the issue of the LGBTQ. Because we know he is against the Sogi Bill. Sabi. So what do I think of the LGBTQ? I think they're people. I do not want to discriminate on them. Sabi ko sa kanila, and I think that we ought to make use of the words, you see? Ah, iba yung discriminating, iba yung discriminatory. I will never, never fall into a discriminatory rage against the LGBTQ. Why? Because all people have their own rights, and I respect those rights. But while, while I respect their rights, I do not want them to push the rights on me that I cannot do my right. No one you may Ibig sabihin, you respect the rights of everyone. Oh. Hindi kita tutuksuhin, hindi kita you know, re-rebuking re for example, unless member ka na eksi ako, ah, hindi kita lolokohen, kahit LGBT ka, pero look ah, you allow me to also preach on the faith I believe in, as I allow you to live according to your own lifestyle. May tawag doon, ano tawag doon? Coexistence. Ang sabi ko, 80% ng LGBTQ at distrito ko, sinuportahan ako. Sinuportahan nila ako. Ang tawag nila sa akin, tatay. Daddy, ayoko lang papa. Si Benny Fox, sinuportahan din nila. Hindi sa pagkatabante siya. Pogi Oh. Hindi ko sila niloloko. Hindi ko sila... I rebuke them. Especially if they're close to me. I would tell them, you know what? God can change your life. Di ba? Oh. But listen, I cannot change them because only God can. Do you know how many homosexuals do I have in my... In my staff, punta ka sa district office staff, punta ka doon sa city hall staff, mga lima yan, mga LGBTQ. They know my stand. They know what I preach. They know that I don't support their lifestyle. Yet, they're still with me. Why? Because I respect them. Tayo mix sila. Then they ask me about abortion. <laughs> Kasi yun ang ano eh, yun ang isa sa mga UN, UN rights eh, human rights. Uh, that it is all right for a woman to abort her baby because that woman has the right. Can you imagine? Uh, abortion on demand. Forced pregnancy. Unwanted pregnancy. So I have the right. I have the right to kill the baby in my womb. Ano sabi ko sa kanila? Human rights are not absolute. Freedom is not absolute. But the right 
to life is absolute. Do you know why? Because God gave that. They have not known that kind of an answer. Yung isang abogado nga, yung undersecretary ng uh, Department of Justice. Sa atin, bawal yan. Hindi pwede. Kaya kung gusto magpa-abort, punta ka sa ibang lugar. Okay, tamo. Sabi ko rin sa mga estudyante, you know, I know where he's coming from. He's a lawyer. But let me tell you something different here. So all our aspirations and desires now revolve around more and more on Christ, His gospel, His kingdom, our faith, our ecclesia, our ministries. We believe that we can be content and happy in Christ for He alone can fully satisfy us in this life and provide for all our needs. Folks, listen. I'm not looking to be happy in this wretched world. I'm just looking to do what God wants me to do. Anyway, someday, I will be totally happy in heaven. And that is what I'm waiting for. Am I right? And that is what you should be waiting for too. Oh. Hindi nangangahulugan, if you will do the Lord's will, you will be happy. Why? Because the Lord's will might involve persecution. It might involve suffering. Am I right? It might involve problems. It might involve a whole lot of things that you don't even like. But I would rather, I would rather be lonely doing God's will and be happy not doing His will. Kuha So don't make it your goal to be happy. And don't make it your goal to be rich. And don't make it your goal to be wealthy. No. Make it your goal to know Jesus Christ more and more in your life. And I'm telling that to myself too, folks. Because even if I have been a believer of Jesus Christ for many, many years, still there's still a lot of things to learn. And, by the way, I learned much from my preachings too. Do you know why? Because no one, no one almost dared to preach to me. You realize that? Tulad ng mga preachers natin dito, pag kanyan ako, kinakabang ma-preach yan. Hindi lang kayo, pati yung mga pastor. Yung matandang pastor, eh, dumating ako bigla eh, sa isang conference. Hindi niya alam darating ako eh. Matanda ang pastor yan ha. Tanda pa sa akin yan. Napipreach na siya. Dumating ako. Naupo ko sa harap. Sabi niya ako, ito na si Pastor Abante. I want people to preach to me. I need that. That's why pag ako speaker sa isang conference, I do not just go there to speak. I go there to listen to. Iniipa ko yung tempo ng mga speakers na kapag inipita mo speaker yan, nandun lang sila, magkasalita, di ba? Pagkatapos na alis na. Hindi ako ganun. Gusto kong makinig, pero ang problema, I was in, in, in Pasay the other day. Andun ako. Alas dos pa lang ng hapon, nandun ako eh. And I want to listen. Saan ako dinala? Sa VIP room. Ano ginawa sa akin? Nagpakwentuhan. Bakit? Hinihintay na ako speaker. No, I want to listen. I want someone to preach to me. Pwede bang umiyak na ako para sabihin sa iyo, kailangan ko yun eh. But the thing is, no one there to attempt to preach to me. Kaya nga pa ako nagpipreach sa inyo. I preach to myself too. Unang-una, pag pinag ko yung outline ko, I want that outline to be applicable to me first. 
before it can be applicable to you. Because if it is not applicable to me, neither would I say it's applicable to you. Why? Because we are the same human beings that has lots of needs. Am I right? The same human beings who have emotions and intellect, mental abilities, spiritual life. Roto lang. Sinasabi ko na sa inyo ang ilang dilemma ko, eh, di ba? Pagkatapos ang service na ito, abalik ako doon, bibis ako. Hihintayin ko hanggang halos lahat kayo wala na. Saka ako baba. Buti nga ngayon, wala na yung kamayan eh. Di ba? Nung wala pa yung pandemic, magkakamayan mo. Isang libong tao yan. <laughs> Ikaw, isa lang kakamayan mo. Ako lang eh. Pwede kayo, pagdaan yan. Kamay ka ng kamay. Ang ah? bira, kap, pipis mo lang. Pagod na pagod na sa kakamay. Ngayon, mano naman. Bata man, matanda, mano. Nakakapagod din pala yun. See? If you think that I'm always, if, if, if you think that I always love to be with people, no. After this, I want to be alone. And I choose the people I fellowship with. You know what I'm saying? I think it's false. Listen, maginig tayo dito, ha? Napakahalaga nito. Oo. Bakit? Masyadong uh, magnetic ang mundo. Di ba? My goodness, if we're not careful, all of us will become worldly. If we're not careful, all of us will do what the world tells us. That's the reason why in this pulpit, all the counsel of God must be preached so that we will all be able to know what the principles of God is and do what His principles tell us. Full stand. Every head be bowed, every eye be closed. I do not need to add to what I said. I don't need to belabor to what has been said tonight. I believe you listened. I believe God, the Holy Spirit, has done His part in convicting us. The question is, what do we say to that? What do we tell God about it? Get these microphones off. And you men, if you want to be here in the altar, you can come to the altar and kneel down.